I'm just going to rewrite it in since we did it already. So the angle is half of 148. Oops. I'm sure it did. They all said hi back. I heard it. Um, okay, so that's number one. Uh, number two. Oops, oops, oops. Sorry. Let's just erase that. We're turning all over the place. Okay, number two. What do you do? It's going to be Pythagorean theorem. Um, you're going to move that radius. Your radius is what right now? 13. 13. So if we move 13 over to here, then we get this triangle. This is 13. What's the other side? What's the leg? 12. 12, right? If the whole thing is 24, then this is 12. So you have x squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Um, anyone know that triple off the top of your head? It's 5. It's five. Um, but if you don't know the triple, solve Pythagorean theorem. You get x squared equals, if you take away the 12 squared, you get 25. Um, and then take the square root, so x is 5. Okay, questions on that? Yes, take that whole chord and cut it in half. Okay, number 3. Um, 40 is this angle. I'm looking for z. What do you do? Okay, so key number one, if you miss this, you can't solve the problem. It is a diameter. If this point is marked for you, it is the center of the circle. If there's not a point there, it's not the center of the circle, okay? So if the point is there, it's the center, meaning that this arc is 180 degrees, right? Because you have a diameter. What else? QS is double the angle, right? So if the angle is 40, then QS is 80. What is Z? What is it? 100. You're going to take 180, that semicircle, minus that 80 degree arc, means that Z is going to be 100 degrees. Okay. Good on that? No, the 40 is doubled. Yeah, because the arc is always oh, sorry, double. Well, we didn't have 80. We had the 40, right? But yes, 80, if you were at the arc and cut it in half, you would get 40. All right, number four. Um, and number four and number eight look an awful lot alike, right? We're a point of two chords meeting inside the circle. Um, one is dealing with segments. One is dealing with angles and arcs. Make sure you pay attention to the difference because you do them very differently. How do you do this one, number four? A times B equals C times D was the formula, right? So when they meet inside, you do from the point to the circle times from the point to the circle. So six times X equals... And then you go from that point to the circle is a length of 8 times from that point to the other side of the circle is a length of 15. Okay, so 6x equals 8 times 15. And then you solve that. 8 times 15 is 120. So 6x equals 120. Divide by 6. X is 20. Questions on that? All right, let me know if I'm going too fast to the next problem, if you're still writing, just tell me. Okay, so number five is the same idea, but it looks very different, but it's the same process. You just write it out differently. How do you do this one? Right, so from the point to the circle would be eight. 
Oops, we're going to go down here. Uh, right, no, plus six. But so eight was the first length. The second length goes from here around to here. So that length is eight plus x. So eight times eight plus x equals, and then you do the same thing up here, 10 is from the point to the circle, and you multiply that from the point to the other side of the circle, which is a length of 16. So you could just go 10 times 16 right now. If you like the formula setup, it would be 10 plus six, but really you're doing 10 times 16, right? Um, so if we simplify that, I will distribute, because most of you distribute. So 64 plus 8x, 10 times 16 is 160. And then we're going to take away the 64. So you get 8x equals 96 divided by 8. So x is... Okay. Questions on that setup? Okay. Number six. It's, you're using the right formula. You're not putting things in the right place, which is a common mistake. What is the standalone? Always. Always the angle. Which one's the angle? 35. So 35 has to be the thing by itself. Okay? So you're going to say the angle equals half of the arc minus the arc. Right? So 35 equals half, and then which arc comes first? The 100. The bigger one or the one that's further away? You can think of it either way. Um, so 100 minus x. How do you solve that? Okay. You can distribute the 1 half, but make sure if you do that, you're dealing with 1 half x. In the end, you got to multiply that by 2 anyway. So I would just get rid of the 1 half and multiply by 2 right now. If I multiply by 2 on both sides, I get 70. And then these cancel, 1 half times 2. So I'm just left with 100 minus x. What I saw on the quiz was people would, um, what? They would multiply by 2, but then they would distribute that 2 and double this stuff. You don't want to do that. When you multiply by 2, it takes care of itself right here. They cancel out. Okay, so you're left with just the 100 minus x. So 70 equals 100 minus x. Take away the 100 or take away the 70 if you don't like to work in negative. So negative 30 equals negative x, which means a positive x is a positive 30. Just divide by negative 1 or multiply by negative 1. Okay. You could have done what? Yes, yeah. All right, questions on that? Okay, number seven. Easiest question on your test right here. What is it? You just cut it in half, right? If the point is on the circle, so if your vertex is on the circle, it is an inscribed angle, and it is half of the intercepted arc. So your intercepted arc is this one, which is 120, making that angle half as much, half of 120. Oops. Oh, sorry, it's picking up my hand. Um, so x is 60 degrees. Okay. Questions on that? All right. Number eight, um, the point meets inside the circle. What do you do with this one? You add what? The arcs, right? What's your standalone? The angle. Which one's the angle? X. So the angle is always by itself, and then the arcs are always together, and we are adding this one because your point met inside the circle. So you would do... 
the intercepted arcs 35 and 160. So half of 195. That's a really ugly 195, sorry. Um, and you get, what is that, 97.5? Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Um, questions on that? Yeah, Braden. Um, so when it's inside, it's add. When uh, the angle, when it's outside, where the angle meets outside, you subtract. So because the angle where they met is inside the circle, for number eight, you're adding. Because it meets outside on number six, you're subtracting. Okay? Um, and it, really on those, if, if you pay attention to the sizes of the angles and arcs, they should, like, if you subtract instead of add, your answer is going to be very, very not drawn to scale. Now, we might not always draw things perfectly to scale, but we try not to draw them so drastically not to scale that it's not reasonable. So if you pay attention to, I did it with subtraction and I got the number 6 versus I did it with addition and I got the number 84, and 6 does not make sense. It probably needed to be the addition way and be 84, right? So just pay attention to what is reasonable with what you're looking at. All right, number 9. You have a quadrilateral inside of a circle. What do you do? Okay, so Z is... Opposite angles are supplementary, not equal, right? A lot of people told me equal on the last quiz. They are supplementary. So Z is going to be 180 minus 93. So Z is 87 degrees. And I would label this stuff as you go, because if you label it, then there's things you're going to see that you wouldn't see otherwise because you just see a variable there instead of a number that you can actually use. Um, I would do x next. How do we do that? x is an inscribed angle. Noah. Right. Um, x is this angle, which opens up to this arc, 58 and 106. Is that the measure of the angle? You got to cut it in half. So you're going to say x, oops, x equals half of um, 106 plus 58, right? Because that's an inscribed angle. So half of, what is that? 114, 140. 64. Um, so cut that in half. You get 82 degrees for X. Um, and then I would write that in because when you write it in, you see that you have that angle. So Y is what? What? It's supplementary. Yeah. So Y is going to be supplementary, right? The ones across from each other have to add up to 180. They are not equal. The only time they're equal is if they equal what? 90, right? 90 would be the only time they actually equal each other. Um, so y um, would be 98 degrees. Okay. Questions on that? Subtract 82 from 180. Yeah. Okay. Um, take a Back at it. Um, number 10. Back side of the worksheet. If you are finding the perimeter of this, this one's a pentagon, right? So if we're going to find the perimeter, where do we start? You can start at the 7. There's a lot of places you could start, right? You need to find all the missing sides. So if we start at the 7, we know this is 7. Okay. What else do we know then? 
the one right next to it, not on the same line, the one that meets at the same point. So if this is seven from this point, where it goes tangent over here, is also seven. Okay, um, so those are both seven. This is five, making, let's switch colors here so you can see where I'm going to. So if this is five, then this one's five, which means this is what? 2.5, because it has to add up to 7.5, so that's 2.5, making this, what, 2.5, okay, that makes this, what, oh, wait, that one is 5, I was thinking that whole side was 5, sorry, this is 5, making this, what, 5, making this side 6, making this six, okay? Notice it's not anything across the way. A lot of people on the last quiz made like, this one over here was three, and then the one across the whole thing was also three. It doesn't work like that. It's the two that are meeting at the same point outside. So they met here, they met here, they met here, right? The ones that meet at the same point are the ones that are the same. So now where you have to be careful is finding that perimeter. The way we're gonna do that is picking all the right numbers, okay? So we have the 11, we have a five here. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, we have a 2.5 here. Sure. Um, this one is 7.5. Don't use the 2.5 and the five because we already did that with our 7.5, okay? You have a five here a seven here, a seven here, a six here. So what you're actually adding is 11 plus five plus 2.5 plus 7.5 plus five plus seven plus seven plus six. Okay, um, if you need to, as you go, just scratch them out. 11, 5, 2.5, 7.5, 7, 7, and 6. That way you don't miss any. That way you don't double any. Just make sure you use them all, okay? Um, so add that up. What did you get? 51. Did everyone get 51? Because I'm not plugging it in right now. I don't want to give you the wrong number. Yes? All right, so your perimeter would be 51 meters. Okay, questions on that? <laughs> All right, um, this one, I don't give you standard form in standard form um, like x minus h squared and y minus k squared, I don't give that to you on the test. However, you will have it in a question on the test like this. So when you get to a question like 12 and it says write it in standard form, you have the format of it, you just need to know what goes where, right? Um, so pay attention to that. Don't forget that you have it on there, it's just not quite as basic as it could be. Um, so number 11 here, it says graph the circle, label the center and the radius. What is the center of this circle? Negative three, positive one. Remember, it's always the opposite of what it looks like because the formula is subtracting. So it's x minus a negative three, which is x plus three, y minus one, which is a positive one. So your center is negative three, one. What's your radius? Four. It's four. It's the square root of that because this is r squared, right? So if we square root those, then our radius is four. So when they graph the circle, um, you're gonna plot your center, negative three, one, would be here. And then I need four other points from you. I need the one that goes up, the one that goes down, the one that goes left, and the one that goes right. So if my radius is four, from here, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four to the right, one, two, three, four up, one, two, three, four to the left, and one, two, three, four down. 
The rest is just you freehanding. As long as you don't make this a square right now or a diamond, I'm good with it, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, but I need to see those four points and then I need just a freehand circle from you. So just give it your best shot. Kind of missed that one. Okay. Questions on that? <clears throat> yeah, Colby. Um, on the test, are we going to have the radius uh, like given to us? Or? It'll look just like this, um, just like the this equation. So the radius, you'll need to square root that last number okay. to find the radius. So we're not going to have one like 12? You'll have one like 12, yes. I thought you meant for this type of problem. Yeah, no, you'll have one just like number 12. No radius. Where the radius isn't given, you have to solve for the radius and plug it in. Yeah. Okay, so let's do that. Number 12, write an equation of the circle with a center of 0, 2 that passes through 5, negative 2. Now, when they give you the center and the point, what variables do those represent? What's the center? HK. So this is your H, this is your K. What's the point? X and Y. Okay, so if you think through standard equation, X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals the radius squared, you're just going to plug into that so we can solve for R squared. What does that look like? 5 minus 0 squared. Negative 2 minus 2 squared equals the radius squared. Now it's just algebra, right? Simplify that. So 5 minus 0 squared is 5 squared or 25. Negative 2 minus 2. And I see a lot of mistakes made on this. What is that? Negative 4 squared is positive 16, okay? If you plug into your calculator negative 4 squared, it's going to tell you negative 16. That's because your calculator thinks you're asking for the opposite of 4 squared. We're talking about the opposite of 4 squared. Okay? Do you see the difference? Yes. Okay. Um, make sure that when you do negative 4, it's in parentheses, and then you're squaring it. So it would be 25 plus 16 is uh, 41, and that's your r squared, okay? Now, you don't square root it because the formula asks for r squared, so just leave it as r squared right now. What you're going to do is plug it into standard form. Basically, what's happening is you're putting your x back here, you're putting your y back here, and you're putting your 41 in here. Okay, so it's going to be x minus 0 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals the radius squared, which is 41. The only other thing you could simplify here is x minus 0 is what? x. So you could just write it as x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 41. I'd probably just leave it be. Okay? All right. Last couple. Um, uh, that's the one we just did. Right? It just doesn't look like distance formula because we're not square rooting it at the end. Um, but that's essentially the distance formula. Um, 13. What's the difference between in space and in a plane? In space is three-dimensional, right? In a plane is two-dimensional. So it's flat in a plane, three-dimensional in um, space. So if I said in space, all the points four centimeters away from a segment. So you have segment AB. What was that? like this aha angels are coming down moment. Um, 
Anyway, four centimeters away from a segment in space. So three-dimensional. What shape are you going to get here? Kind of a cylinder. There will be a cylinder to it. It's more like a pill. It's like those pills that you stick the two parts together, right? Um, it, if it was in a plane, it would be the racetrack, right? So you can always start with the racetrack and then just make it three-dimensional. Um, so the way you make it three-dimensional is make it a cylinder with a, a half a sphere on either side. So it would look something like this. Um, you would get a pill, essentially. Okay. Um, 14 says in a plane, all points that are two centimeters from point P. So if I have point P... I'm in a plane, so am I 2D or 3D? Two-dimensional. And what do you get from this? A circle. a circle, right? Everything that's two centimeters away, if you went two centimeters this way, you'd end up here. If you went two centimeters this way, here. Two centimeters this way, you're here. I missed. Um, so essentially, you're getting a circle where these are all two centimeters, okay? Yeah, you're not going to actually measure it. Um, questions? 